Welcome back. You're watching KTN News Desk. Time for our afternoon business conversation now with the advancement in technological know-how in the country and IT has become a key driver in this economy. But with all that advancement, there's an important conversation about security. How secure are your IT and, 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 and operators that you're using in business, in life, in play? in all the sectors. And today we want to delve a little bit into that. And joining me is Bethel Opil, who's from Kaspersky Lab Kenya, the people who are in charge of making sure that your computer and your work environment is safe. Bethel, a few years ago, we had uh, the new concept of cloud computing, computing rather. And now we're talking about virtualization. Um, I understand this is more to do with the security aspect, but still working from a different point to where you are. Just dumb it down for us. What exactly is virtualization? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me to this video. Right. Uh, virtualization basically is the software mm -hmm. that uh, manipulates the physical infrastructure to create a virtual environment. Right. And uh, cloud computing is basically uh, the services mm -hmm. that arise from this manipulation. Right. So basically. Uh, virtualization is actually a process in cloud computing. Mm -hmm. yes. So, um, and obviously the whole intention is to make it safer. Yeah, okay. The, the whole intention is to be able to limit and maximize on resources mm -hmm. such that you're able to share uh, applications, you're able to share uh, different operating systems mm -hmm. from one host computer. Mm -hmm. And then these services are availed in the other uh, virtual, what you call the virtual machines. This sounds like a very business to business uh, operation. It's okay. Uh, there's this phenomenon that uh, virtualization was actually uh, a preserve of uh, big multinationals and big data centers. But then the benefits now mm -hmm. actually pushes uh, the, even the small enterprises mm -hmm. to be able to go into cloud computing. Mm -hmm. And then now with this, now comes the issue of uh, security. Because mm -hmm. uh, when so, uh, so much uh, data sits in a different location, then there comes uh, the, the risk of uh, uh, some information being able to, leaked, to be leaked or something. Mm -hmm. yes. Bethel, obviously a lot of business people and entrepreneurs who are looking at this as a solution mm -hmm. would be wondering, is this uh, malware proof? Okay. Now, uh, virtual envir environment and physical environment totally there's no difference. Mm -hmm. The only difference comes to what we call part of the infrastructure called the hypervisor that sees right. that this is actually a virtual machine. Right, you're getting a little bit technical. So help me understand. So let's call it it's in the virtual space, it, right? It's in the virtual space. Can we still have cyber attacks and, and such things in that space? Yes, it is. Uh, there can be attacks and in fact I would say the attacks can even be worse than in a physical environment. Right. Because there's, there's, there's been this belief that uh, in a uh, in a virtual environment, you're protected. Actually, mm -hmm. you're just protected by the firewall of the company. Mm -hmm. Now, in case the firewall is breached, the virtual machines are usually the most vulnerable. Right. And that's why uh, uh, we encourage that the same same IT security uh, uh, policies mm -hmm. being applied on the on the physical environment be replicated on the virtual environment. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, taking into account the infrastructure in the Virtual environment. Is this a tool for small business people? Yes, uh, it's a tool for uh, for small I mean, business can, people. Can they afford it? Yes, they uh, they can be able to afford. Right. If you look at uh, the, the the data centers that we do have now, and uh, you might be a small enterprise and uh, you're actually dealing with a very big client, mm -hmm. which now requires you to to be able to manage. Uh, big data, mm -hmm. you, uh, virtualization uh, becomes is not, is, is not an option, is a must for you. Right. So it's virtually going to, uh, with, with, with the time, we're going to have more and more uh, SMEs coming in into mm -hmm. the virtual computing environment. Right. How, how is the uptake in the African environment, for example? Uh, currently, the uptake is, uh, is very fast, mm -hmm. and uh, especially in East Africa, with the landing of the fiber optic cable, now we've got a big bandwidth space and uh, and a lot of uh, interest in that. Uh, Kenya now is becoming a, a, a big IT uh, hub in East Africa. Mm -hmm. So the uptake is uh, is very very uh, is very very fast. Mm -hmm. and in fact, this is some of the reasons why, uh, if, if you look at the government uh, security master plan, there is uh, uh, there is 
a plan to be able to move the data centers offshore and bring them into the country. Right. Yes. Bethel, obviously your job uh, involves ensuring that as many Kenyans as possible buy antiviruses and, and, and their systems are secure. But what do you think is the biggest impediment to people uh, getting services like this, like virtualization? Because out there, a lot of people are engaging in business, but they don't have these facilities. What do you think is stopping them from accessing this? Okay, uh, first I would say it's lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. In terms of, uh, they do not know how to be able to, uh, where to get the services first, mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of uh, cost savings they'll be able to do. Mm -hmm. For example, if, you, if, you, if, if you're ready a, in a, a virtual environment, you don't need to replicate many applications on all your virtual desktops. You don't right. need to have a big amount of uh, hardware mm -hmm. in uh, which actually consumes a lot of your office space. And then uh, there's also the issue of being, be, being able to access your data from different localities. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you've got an enterprise where you've got different branches in different uh, localities, uh, you are actually staring mm -hmm. at uh, virtualization. Right. Yeah. Bethwell, generally speaking in terms of cyber security, um, with, with uh, Kaspersky having set shop in Kenya a few years now, um, what are the trends in, in regards to cyber security in this country? Okay, uh, currently we are, uh, we, we, maybe I would uh, compare some uh, information on uh, the kind of threats that we saw in 2013, mm -hmm. in 2012, mm -hmm. a very big increase between 2012 and 2013. And then the first half of this year has actually seen uh, quite a, a decline on the number of uh, malware that we detect mm, uh, yeah. daily right. through our uh, Kaspersky security network. Right. So uh, this is uh, because uh, we have seen uh, one good initiative from the government in terms of the IT security master plan. Right. And then we've also seen a uh, proper campaign from uh, vendors mm -hmm. and from other parties to be able to educate the public on, uh, on uh, cybercrime. Right. Yeah. So a lot of it is, is improving. I had also some bit of good news. Kaspersky setting shop in Ethiopia. How true is that? Uh, Actually, we're already in Ethiopia. Okay. What actually, uh, what actually happened is that now I've taken up the Ethiopia market mm -hmm. from our Middle East office. Okay. Because we look at uh, proximity right. in terms of having uh, being managed from Middle East rather right. than being managed from, from Nairobi. Right. So that's now part of, uh, part of my territory mm -hmm. and part of the African territory. Otherwise, the rest of the Sahara countries are managed from uh, the Middle East basically because of, let me say, the, the culture, the language and the rest. All right. Mm -hmm. That's a good place to wind up. Bethel O'Peel, who's uh, head of sales channels in Africa for Kaspersky Lab, and his job is to ensure that your, your facilities are indeed safe. Thank you so much for coming on the Welcome. show.